speaking of like dependable as ever people who still animate on youtube um have you been keeping up with big top burger tim yes (laughs) i i just watched i I had fallen behind so i caught up yesterday um oh yeah who the heck did they get for the most recent one they got some fucking names not really Okay. Well, so for the second season, I mean, the dude from, um, what's his name, Pro ZD, he's one of the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know who does the voice Chris of Chandler, Chandler, right? but he's, a, yeah, he's apparently a pretty big YouTube guy. He is um, Tumblr's favorite person of all time, for some uh, reason. He's an I've actual, he him. is an actual comedian. Okay. All I know is I greatly enjoy his performances as Cesare. <laughs> mm. We need uh, ketchup needs to be redder. We need more yellow in the mustard. Uh, it's good to what see so it? many familiar faces. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like That's... the same guy. And it's just yeah. him twice. <laughs> just what was the... There was one where it was like a quick cutaway gag where... I like that that's, like, a new thing where each episode, it like, does a quick cut to Cesare's face, like, animated differently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember now. There was one really good one where <laughs> it cracked me up because it was just, like, super... Mm. Like, it had no detail whatsoever. Mm. Let me see. I need to be able to mute this beforehand. Why is yeah, I know. Fat? Where is he? Oh, um, where do these somehow makes the YouTube animation thing work, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he does have a Patreon, which I don't know why people are so hesitant to get Patreons nowadays. It's like, that's like, just kind of how people make a living. Ones, but yeah, that's how people make a living on YouTube anymore. I've got six. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you cannot make enough money off of ads unless you are... I don't know, some, like, corporate channel, pretty much. Yeah. Or you, like, primarily stream and then upload VODs to YouTube, and that's just, like, the second half of your income. Yeah, yeah right. that definitely is a... Oh, seems to be a new right. thing. Streamers always have, like, their YouTube channel where people cut it up and, like, make it fun with editing, and then they also just have a VOD channel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. I don't watch streamers, but I will watch VODs. Like, yeah. I don't tune into live streams at all. Yeah. I don't know who has the time, energy, or money to yeah. watch and contribute to streams. Like, I like Critical Role, I guess. You know, but they upload their entire episodes on YouTube. Every Monday, so why would don't, I don't like interact yeah. with an audience? No, not anymore. I mean, which they yeah. never really did. They did that with, for like guess, the first but... five streams, and that was it. Right? Yeah. I mean, because at a certain point, they probably realized it was a bad idea. Because, well, I mean, look at their fan base now. <laughs> it's like millions of people. <laughs> And all of them are terrible. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, I think we can say just like uniformly, all Critical Role fans are terrible people. Yeah. Can I get yeah, a lot of generally chat? happens with <laughs> generally happens with large, very over enthusiastic fan bases. There's definitely a, a weird. Um, there's like a weird undercurrent in the. TTRPG community that like if you are a critical role fan you are like the you are just like dirt yeah like, it is it's a weird uh, you are the reason yeah that, that's not that D has died and by died of course that means been more successful than it ever has but um yeah but now it's, it's mainstream so it's not cool anymore well and My... it's so weird to be a critical role fan who got mm. in the before he knew about Critical Role. Right. And that is the general consensus of one, among these dickheads. My, yeah. um, my understanding of the TTRPG community, which I mostly get through Maddie, uh, 
leads me to believe that it is extremely deranged. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm... I mean, yeah, it's just... It's just people who like magic, but a bit to the left. Maybe. Honestly, <laughs> the magic community, I think, is more is less deranged than the TTRPG community. That's wild. I don't no, believe I'm... that people who play card games <laughs> are not deranged. <laughs> Oh no, they're deranged. I like I that's why I said less deranged, not not deranged. Okay, fair enough. Not not. Not not fair if it is. Okay. No, I, I just my impression of the TTRPG community is that like it's like too personal to like be reasonable. Oh, uh, we gotta do some more fiasco. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. Post a goddamn quest. Yeah. Um Maybe one day I'll have the time to pick up the Dungeon Master's Guide and try and DM a thing for you guys. Oh, I'd do it. I'm always pretty surprised that I haven't gotten into tabletop games. I genuinely think Fiasco is a very good on-ramp to it. Because Fiasco is very easy to understand. And yeah, f- and but from I mean, there you mean, it's you mean tabletop RPGs. Yes, or... yes, yeah, because Fiasco is just a tabletop RPG except you don't roll anytime you want to do something, you just do it. Yeah. You just tell jokes with your friends, tell a story with your friends. Okay, so the next step is do that, but when you want to do something, you have to see if you succeed, and if you don't succeed, you have to try something else. I feel like Fiasco, not that I've played it, but I remember you guys talking about it. Um, I feel like that would be my my preferred version of doing like a tabletop kind of thing. Just more guided, you mean? Or? More guided, yeah. And Short just and less sweet, like, it's a one-off. Self-contained, yeah. Yeah, self-contained doesn't go on forever. Like It has room to be just like, just as wacky and insane as D&D campaigns, but it's just I don't know. D and D is so overwhelming sometimes. That's I don't. Definitely true. I don't find it too overwhelming personally, but it's just so hard to organize that it it very often ends up not being worth it, and that's why so many campaigns fizzle out. Yeah, it's just hard to choreograph everyone being available at the same time for multiple yeah. hours. Right. Yeah. On presumably the same day. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, cool. We D&D'd for three hours and we did one battle. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that also often happens. Yeah, I think maybe it would be cool if we wanted to try and do something and I was to DM. If we just did, like, just use the same character every time, but just a bunch of one-shots. Yeah. I mean, that could be a thing. And that character is almost guaranteed to be a monk, human, and or orc. I have I have learned have more and more. Setting. Uh, I learned more and more that the only thing I want to do is hit things with a club, and okay. I only want to hit things with a fist. <laughs> Fair enough. That's true to the Jordan Jenkins belief system. I feel okay. like. Yeah, I just <laughs> as I've kind of like learned my. Uh, what I enjoy in like games, I've learned that I have a, a blunt instrument who does not like guile. I guile just Street Fighter. Why don't you uh, like Travis yes. Willingham's guile? Um, too many arms. Why did we all we all converged around the freaking puke puke like we were fighting it? I mean, I was just gathering birds for the bear. Birds. You know what? Good point. <laughs> I mean, it is Monster Hunter Rise. The Barith is the, ed- the hardest, <laughs> the animal, hardest animal in the game. Animal? Animal. They're animals now. Hey, animal. wait, I need Brackdard Silk. Animal Killer 5. Animal Killer 5. Where did that Rachnoid go? <laughs> Quest for meat. Was that a Superman 4? Yes. <laughs> Good one. Thank you. 
You're welcome. And that concludes our transaction. <laughs> Upon request, wow, I, can, yeah. I can give you a good day. Shit monster. I'll give you a good day. Please refrain from crudeness. Yeah, bet. Huh? Reminds me of when we were talking about... I think we were talking about shows, and I made a statement, and Chris was like, yeah, name two other ones. And we just, I just <laughs> sat there like, uh... <laughs> I also am known for the world's harshest gotcha. It's true. <laughs> I just, I just so like to challenge the way that people think. I'm doing the world a service. If, if I could ever in my life remember the name of that stupid podcast man, I would have said it. But I, I can't ever remember his name, and that's probably an okay thing. Joe Rogan? That's the one. Okay. I ruined it for him. <laughs> You're right. able to forget that man's name? He I is. Am. I knew it had an R in it. Lord, I am envious of you. Yeah, that's not I think fair. You spend too much brain power on this man. Yeah, just I... call him Bob Roman. <laughs> we need to. We need to cancel Bob Roman. Yeah. <laughs> we need to replace Joe Rogan with Bob Roman, and then cancel. And then not Bob tell Roman. anyone. <laughs> <laughs> he sells cars, so he probably sucks. Yeah. yeah, he definitely sucks. He sells used cars. <laughs> but he's a Chicago staple, which means he probably sucked. <laughs> yeah, well, so is fucking Luna. Do you have positive feelings yeah. about Luna aside from their jingle? I like and, em and Empire. Today. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> videos of the, the guy who uh, originally did the EA Sports. It's in the game. What about no. him? Like, people will just, like, take videos with him trying to do their best impression of it. <laughs> Was he I think it's presumably just these... some employee from EA or something? Uh, yeah, I think that's, like, his only thing that he's done. But, like, apparently people recognize him on the street. And I was like, I for sure would not. Maybe he was just Even if he, maybe they were just walking by and he happened to be talking about Yeah, no, I did something for EA Sports. Force. And then they're like We have to understand that like there are some people who who only play EA sports based video games and have still somehow put more hours into video games than we have. Yeah. Like Duncan? <laughs> no, he likes two games. Uh, he's Yeah, he's more <laughs> of a an RPG guy. Um, sort of an MMO guy. He likes that baseball uh, RP, that basketball RPG, NBA 2K. I'm not convinced that he is much of an RPG guy anymore. I'm willing to believe that because he he does have a literal tattoo from Final Fantasy 14, but he sounds like he hasn't played it in like five years. But it's free through he through noted award winning expansion Heaven Sword. <laughs> Heaven's Gate. Or Heaven's Feel. Heaven's Gate! <laughs> My favorite expansion. To yeah. Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> I love the Nikes now. Avatars <laughs> kill Damn, I was just going to talk about equipping <laughs> Nikes. <laughs> Equip it on your foot slot. <laughs> That's where all of your game in-game avatars kill themselves, hoping to become real people. You know? Oh, right. That, that was you know Heaven's Gate. <laughs> What's going to be horrifying is that uh, the Final Fantasy XIV community would wholeheartedly participate in that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it got them, like, a purple loot, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what are you... Why are you down here? Why are you going? Wait, come we back. Go. Come is this back. just like a... Oh. I have to take a picture of Pistorius. That's the last thing I have to take a picture of. <laughs> oh shit, I should have taken a picture of all mother. I'm so stupid. We'll fight all mother again. Oh, I need a, I need a gem. <laughs> I also need a gem. 
Oh, uh, this is probably my last one for tonight, though. Okay. Yeah, that's All right. I should probably walk the dog. The fun song? Good song. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, you're wrong, I idiot. It's walking the dog. Oh, cool. <laughs> this means nothing to me because I've never oh, heard yeah. that song and I don't plan on it. God, you're so Think before you speak. stupid. Good song. By noted band Fun. They are a band, and if you say they aren't, you're wrong. Are they noted, though? Okay, well, they oh, also I... technically aren't a band, because they they stopped being a band. They did stop being a band. Well, then you're wrong. <laughs> How long did they participate in being a band? Didn't seem like that long. They did two it like albums. Long. It was like five years, I think. Give or take. You know, if I made, uh, you know, like, a hundred million dollars over five years, then I'd probably stop doing anything. We should before. imagine Dragons had done that. Like, the problem yeah, is same. they're still doing things, just not together, so it's worse. <laughs> well, mm. Jack, like Antonoff is still, Jack Antonoff is still doing things. <laughs> I don't think the other, I, the other two have ever have done anything, really. Nate Roos has done some solo stuff. Well, he did, like, one solo album, like, like five minutes after the band broke up, and has disappeared since then. Uh, he was in that <laughs> song with, um, the, the woman. Pink? You know what that was, is he probably just... And the song with the woman. Yeah, I do think it he was probably pink. just. Uh, what a weird oh, combination. Yeah. yeah. The, the well, that song guy who went like solo five minutes after that band broke up. I will never speak again. <laughs> Go ahead. Listen, Tim. Guy who went solo. Oh. No. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Anyway. <laughs> Tim, say, say what you're saying. No. Guy who went solo. Well, anyway, so was it with Pink or not? Yeah. Okay. So I was trying Just to... give me a reason. Okay, Tim, I've Most muted... Most annoying Tim, voice I've... on Earth. I've muted everyone else on the call. Please tell me what you were going to say. Uh, I was just going to say that that guy who went solo probably just uh, took the songs that he had written for fun but never got to actually make and made an album and then stopped making because he stopped having songs to write. Does that make sense? The guy had probably written some songs for fun and they never got put on an album. So he's like, well, fuck it, I'm going to make money off of these. After I bounce from fun, and then he never made music again. That's it. Thank you for sharing. Everyone can talk again now. Alright. Jesus. Anyway. But yeah, two of the guys disappeared, and then one of the guys was the most important person working in music right now. He's in the, he's the bleachers. Yeah, Jack Antonoff, uh. who's like the producer on like every big pop hit for the last ten years. Yeah, that seems about right. But what about sort of Carly Rae Jespin? Jespin? I was going about... say, if he's the guy from the bleachers, then I am unsurprised that pop music has been shit for this long. <laughs> yeah, it's wild that the bleachers are like not good, but he was a part of fa Fun, who have exactly one incredibly good album. Maybe it's not that wild. <laughs> Pretty wild. It's it because that. it turns out maybe the guitarist for fun wasn't the important driving force I mean, artistically. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a thing. I choose to believe it was the third guy who no one knows and Who no was... one knows. <laughs> what about <laughs> Red Taylor's version, been... Jack Antonoff's version? I uh I love Taylor Jack Antonoff. Taylor one day the guy that no one knows is going to uh, make like a redo album like Taylor Swift did to get the rights back. And it's just going to be all the fun songs, but like fucking awful. Because he does not sound Actually, like Nate Russo. <laughs> because he's probably not the best. I don't think I've ever heard that guy speak. <laughs> and I've listened to both fun albums multiple times. Which one is he? The drum? Is there a drum? They yeah, normally don't drummer. speak on albums to be f in his defense, Jordan. Fair enough, but like, 
I at least like I've heard Jack Antonoff's voice. You know? No, I don't know if I've heard Jack Antonoff's voice, even though I'm confident at some point I probably heard it. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> Wait, like you've heard him sing? Probably. He probably was in the background on some fun songs. Wait, is he the Bleachersman? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Bleachersman. Bleachman. Oh, well, I've heard him sing in whatever that song was that they made. Yeah, he's Bleachigo. Kurosagi. Sure. Kusanagi. What smells like cotton candy? Is someone vaping downstairs? That's gotta be what it is. <laughs> Maybe someone has a cotton candy machine and they're making cotton candy. Y'all try that oh. space-flavored Coca-Cola? I have. Tastes like cotton I thought candy. It was, I thought it was oh, fine. Yeah, yeah I've, I've enjoyed both of that and the Coke Zero Space version. Haley uh, bought me a cursed Mountain Dew bottle um, that is sitting in my fridge. It is called Mountain Dew Flamin' Hot. Oh, I saw that. It... What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I have yet um, to consume it because it is it is too cursed for me to want. I think I think Nandu has gone too far. I don't I think mean, you can justify it. I supposedly it was like a limited thing, like Flaming Hot Cheetos crossover event, and then they all sold out real quick. So they like did a run of them or something. Tim, I don't know. you gotta document how that tastes. I, right yeah, now. Go like get I it do. right now. You want me to get it right now and document how it tastes? Tim, I want you to get it right now and document how it tastes, please. Here I go. Thank you. Here I go. What do you guys think it tastes like? Um, I think it tastes like death. Good guess. Probably tastes just like liquid. I, I feel like it's just going to be like, oh, this is cap season mixed with Mountain Dew. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I definitely think it's going to be underwhelming. Yeah, oh, it's going to be. It is, it's gonna be it is like a a bright, like opaque red, uh, yeah, like orange contrast. red. So um, like flaming hot Cheetos. Tastes like yeah, yes, shitty mustard and <laughs> tastes like some ketchup and just a lot of shitty mustard. Um. So there's like a warning on the front. Caution, flaming hot taste. Hell yeah, uh, brother. Watch there's out. There's like a there's a fire a little fireman like a not a not a, a fireman, but like a little a man of, of fire. A man a, a Johnny Blaze, if you will. A little guy yeah. here. Right? Like a Chris. And it Evans. looks like he's holding it looks like he's holding like a spoon for some reason, and the spoon is on fire. It looks like he's actually holding a gun to his head. <laughs> he's got fingerless gloves, uh, which that, that rules. That's Wait, how you know. Uh, track, you yeah. can make out that this man on this can has fingerless gloves. You know, in fact, the the literal only thing he is wearing is fingerless gloves. So how risque? That rules. Um, I respect it. Yeah, says. It's true. Flamin' Hot Dew with a blast of heat and citrus flavor with other natural flavors. Oh, I love nice. citrus, citrus flavor with other natural flavors. <laughs> I wanted it to rhyme. This is going to really knock you guys out. Can you guess what the three top ingredients are? Uh, water. Um, water. Keep guessing. Uh, Sugar. Corn syrup. Cor yeah, corn syrup. Cur yeah, obviously. Hmm? And then, and then, <laughs> whoa, that would be messed up. Uh, what would you say? Capsaicin. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, that's that's the, what makes things spicy. That's yeah. yeah that's oh, okay. What makes it spicy. Um, what is the what is the acid used in in like? Yeah, citric acid. Yeah, I was citric gonna say what would do is a citric acid. Uh, mm. Yeah, you got the top three. Um, oh. Other than that, I don't really see anything that sticks out as hot. Well, it's just under natural flavors or whatever. Maybe. Uh, it's All right. It's an unnatural flavor. Yeah, right, that looks like this? startlingly scarier than Mountain Dew Code Red. Yeah. Like red. It's the weird opaque orange red. Yeah, like potentially radioactive. Yeah. All right. Can I can I get some uh, some silence in the room here for a second? Yeah. Go ahead and mute us, Chris. Yeah. One second. All right. Hopefully this uh, 
this comes through. Go ahead. You know what? I'm going to turn off crisp for this even. Really got to get the full experience going on here. Can I pause you for one second? I googled crisp Mountain Dew Flamin' Hot, and the first result is, why all the lies? Anyway, as you were. <laughs> all right. Here we are. Here we are. Nice. All right. That's all I needed you to hear. You could get, you could bring the band back. Oh, I thought you were going to guzzle it for us too. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to guzzle it right now. Okay, but go for it. You guys need to be able to talk about it for the, the throat ASMR. <laughs> it it smells like how Mountain Dew smells. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good start. So you yeah. know, like. Vaguely kind of. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. The drink was available exclusively on Mountain Dew's website for one day on August 31st, but sold out after an hour? Is this true? This, that's what I'm talking about. How did you get this? All right. Here go uh, no, I think they I think it was so popular they actually made they it. They re-released it because we just saw yeah. it in the store like not long ago. Walmart, right, here we go. Thirty dollars for one can. Taking a gulp. <laughs> Promising. Okay. Now, hmm. I would not call that hot. It says the flavor, uh, Google says that the flavor is citrus flavor. Is that, would you say that's accurate? Yeah, let me, let me do another. <laughs> it's like this, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> It's like Mount. It just. It's just Mountain Dew, except it's like the carbonation just like flies up your sinuses into your nose instead of going okay. down. Okay. Um, yes. Can I give? I can't you, really. Exp go ahead. Can I offer you the first two reviews on Google for Mountain Dew Flame and Hot Sixteen Ounce One Can? I was just about to post it, it in the. <laughs> yeah, that's one star. Do you want to give us a heart attack? Or stroke? I don't even want to give it a star. I'm sorry. Abomination is a wonderful way to describe this drink. I feel it should be pulled out of circulation. I was on a phone call with my friend. My friend said it made him sick. I heard him cough and puke right on the phone from this <laughs> drunk, so I tried it too. No. No, 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 no. It should be drunk. thrown away. I give Mountain Dew props for trying, though. This was a waste of time, Mountain Dew. Please discontinue this drink. And then the second review, this flavor is probably one of the blessed, best flavors I've tasted in a long, long time. It is so damn good that I publicly denounced Coca-Cola on my Facebook page and began drinking Mountain Dew full time. This, oh this God, soda Coca brought my pet cat Samson back to life, who is now raving and jiving to the sound of Stanley Brothers banjo riffs and Menards commercials from way back when. That said, my tongue is now numb, four out of five. I, I don't know if there's a, a way to physically drink this without coughing after every sip. I would assume not. Like, it, I'm sure it just has, like, pure capsaicin, like, buried in there somewhere. <laughs> I, I had it's ask, it's not... It took another sip, huh? It, it's not hot is the problem. Like, oh. nothing about this, like, feels, like, hot. It's Nicola. just... It's Nicholas just like a sensation in my nose. That's about it. Nicholas Pence yeah. claims it pairs especially well with fried chicken. I believe that. Yeah. Well, I guess here's my question: Is this the peak of Flavor Town? <laughs> is this guy's responsibility? Did he do <laughs> it? Feels it? Like something is he guy do. responsible for this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'm getting used to it. it. It's just, it doesn't make sense conceptually. It, it is just Mountain Dew. It's just brands. Except it makes your, it makes your throat feel like a little bad, mm -hmm. and they messed. It makes up, you feel like you have to sneeze. They messed up a batch and knocked next door to the Cheetos people because they're owned by the same company, probably, and just said, <laughs> and just said, "Hey, why don't us like slap your label on this so we can get rid of these mistakes and make money." They're like, hey, we got like, like five hundred tons of leftover <laughs> uh, flame and hot powder from the last batch. Why well, just, mm -hmm. well, just throw it in? We never yep. tell anyone this, but it goes bad in, in three hours, so you need to use it immediately. Well, that's what I assume. Like the like Halloween do is is just the leftover <laughs> of 
all of the random dues they put out through the year that they get rid of. <laughs> oh my like, god! Or the no, the worst one is the Fourth uh, of July due. Yeah, which is oh, just yeah. like that one is. I think it's getting rid of old product. Yes, yeah, I think it's like purple, and it's literally just like we threw like eight different Mountain Dews in this it's, one. It's the red, white, it's, it's the red, white, and blue. It's voltage. Uh, oh, red, white, and red. dew. That's right. Yeah, and then the like white out or whatever it is, like the white, white one, <laughs> and then it's just like oh, it's it's red, white, and blue. <laughs> it's just like yeah, you guys are you guys are just getting rid of like the the stuff that you had. Sitting yeah, around. that one is sad. Yeah, pr- pretty just, much every time. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say that the, uh, well, no, you go first. Oh, I, I was just going to say that every time I try a flavor that is not either regular Mountain Dew or Code Red, I am just like, I shouldn't have bought this. Have you tried the Code Red or the Mountain Dew Zero? I think I have. It's okay. It's better than the, uh, Diet. But it's still not very good. I, if they yeah. ever do a Code Red Zero, I would definitely try that. Mm. They might have. I feel, like, I feel like that one would be better. Yeah. yeah cher- I cher- one. Cherry flavors fit well within Zero Sugar. Yeah. There's there's something about the the regular flavor of Mountain Dew that just makes the, what, the aspartame or whatever taste like way worse. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't help, too, that it's like, oh, this drink that normally has, like, 39 grams of sugar in a 12-ounce can, <laughs> let's put none in it. <laughs> yeah. What, what if we did none for this one? I just love this entire conversation is at the backdrop of Tim taking another sip and coughing. <laughs> yeah, we always know when he tries again. <laughs> I, I'm getting a little better. Uh, I feel like I cough every every two now, maybe. It's almost bearable. I like, can like, almost drink this in All the right. way that drinks are meant to be drank. Slap it that on the can. It's okay. It's almost Everyone bearable. Can tolerate Mountain Dew Flame and Hot, at least for a little bit. Look, it, it goes down rough to start, but by, by, by the end of it, you'll be you'll be drinking it like a pro. I say as, as Tim <laughs> coughs up another <laughs> other sip. <laughs> Heart attack. Now, you're, now your Mountain Dew Flame and Hot is perfect for throwing away. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, this is a whole a whole bottle of this. Like, I feel it. Like when I get to the end of this, which I will not finish it tonight, but um, I my throat will just be. I I mean, from the combination of the coughing and whatever horrifying substance they have put in here, my throat will just be tatters. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to hear how you feel twelve hours from now at eight a.m. Yeah, I'd, I'd be wondering that too. But I just had a very cursed idea. Um, okay. Flame and hot Cheeto cereal. I think that exists. And, well, you well yeah, actual cereal, but oh. you, you replace the milk with this. You just actually oh, oh. the I, milk was gonna I think nullify they, everything. <laughs> I think they illegally use that in Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, that, that sounds like a torture technique. We don't we don't even wait for them to make cereal. We could just take a bag of flame and hot Cheetos, crush it up. And then put it in a bowl and pour some of this in, and you you got the baby. You the got most, a stew like, going. We just we just blast, let the bodies hit the floor, and make them all eat their crunchy hot mess every day. Is, this, is that the most stoner thing anyone has ever conceived of? <laughs> I just like to imagine that. Happy like, twenty, everyone. You have Happy a bowl. Four twenty. Yeah, you have a bowl of flaming hot cheetos. Oh, yeah. and you pour this Mountain Dew in it, and then it just dissolves everything it touches. Yeah, it actually, it actually I, neutralizes it and turns into pure water. <laughs> <laughs> it's like That's if Phase cancels it. <laughs> this is this is secretly the the antidote to flaming hot cheetos. <laughs> Welcome to the Resistance yeah. Mountain Dew. <laughs> An extra bad one. Why are you doing this to yourself? You can stop him. You know what we need? What we actually need to do is we need to buy a pack of these and make uh, oh, no. mixed drinks with them for Mario no, Party. Same. Well, what we do for Mario Party is <laughs> we buy we buy the hard Mountain Dew. No, no, we're gonna need to do this actually, and we're oh, gonna no. need to put Malord in it. No, no. Malord. <laughs> oh, no, that might actually make it like palatable. Tim, <laughs> Tim, there is a Which hard one. Tim, I don't Tim, know. Tim. There is hard Mountain Dew Baja Blast Zero Sugar. This is true. 
I, I, I literally like after that was announced, I, I saw someone in Yats with one, and I'm like, <laughs> why were you allowed to bring that in here? But also give me that. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> yeah, no, we definitely have. We have to definitely get like a variety pack of this shit for, uh, <coughs> uh for 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 Mario Party. That way, yeah. when you're all raging at the end, it'll be like, what the. <laughs> 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 My my nose is dripping for some reason, and like, again, it's not because of a hot sensation. It's just it's, it's all the carbonation going into your nose. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's your body attempting to reject this. <laughs> okay, hey guys, I have some good news. I'm and having some a bad fever. News. Go okay. Both the good news and bad news is hard Mountain Dew is now available in Florida, Iowa, and Tennessee only. So bad then, news, it's only I must be a fucking in, liar. It's only available in Florida, Iowa, or Tennessee. Good news, road trip. <laughs> we can do it. Duh. We can go yeah. we can go down to Florida for the the um for the Mario party. Or we can we can go to Iowa and swing by Gays, Illinois. That's true. That would be <laughs> a brilliant option. reason to go to Gays, Illinois. I mean, that's like a week long thing then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, we just we just go to Iowa. We just <laughs> went over show. to Iowa just to get the Mountain Dew. I was not that we, far away. We we drive to Gays, Illinois, just to see the two story outhouse. Then just cross the border real quick to buy a, a pack of hard Mountain Dew, and then haul ass all the way back to Indiana. Look, Iowa City is. Uh, let, let me see here. Directions. <laughs> From Indianapolis, eight hours. It's only five and a, it's only five and a half hours. Oh, <laughs> that can be and done in a day. Yeah, and like, well, that's even a bit inside Iowa. We can okay. We can one second. Like, one second. One and... second. One second. One second. <laughs> you have to make a stop through Gaze, Illinois first. Yeah. Let me, this well, is this is the one I've got. Seem, does seem to kind of cut through about that area. Okay. Well, we need to. We don't need to cut through the the area. We need to go exactly through. Yeah, <laughs> so we can see my dragon correct collection dot com. <laughs> the, yeah, that the okay empty with, facade with a pit mm. stop in Gaze, Illinois. It is a seven hour drive. Yes, that is like. considerably longer. <laughs> How does it add that much time to it? Because is uh, I- Iowa City like way more north? Uh, well, that's a bit into Iowa. If we just if we just cross the border, I wasn't sure. Like, there's Davenport, which is like the border of Illinois and Iowa, and that <laughs> one's only about six hours. Visit Grub. <clears throat> also, because oh, wait, no, he doesn't live there anymore. Yeah, he lives in Carroll Stream now. Also, yeah, because uh, to go to to get up to I eighty, you can mostly just take I seventy four straight out of Indy. But to go to Gaze, you have to go down I-70 for a long time and then hop up 57 and then get on 74. Yeah. Uh, so it is It is not just a straight west travel. Correct. No. Gotcha. It's a little bit south. It's, a, it's pretty close to straight west, but obviously the roads don't quite work out that way. Anyway, this could definitely be our first day of the, of the Mario Party. <laughs> is a 14-hour day? day. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. no, that's what we need to do immediately after the next day. <laughs> like, the problem is, the problem is, we would have to, uh, one, we would have to look up if Iowa has weird liquor laws like Indiana does. Secondly, we would have to leave yep. pretty early in, able, in order to actually go to gays <laughs> and still get to Iowa City while they are selling things. Also, we don't have to go to Iowa City. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I changed to Davenport, so it's only about six hours. Also, let's find if they have a gold Mario amiibo. Yes, that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Iowa anyway, is right, the I, land of things that we need right now. <laughs> <laughs> Iowa is for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I do need to head out now, though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's fair. Rest in rest in peace, your esophagus and colon. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, too. maybe my. I'll I'll let you know if if there's any feeling on the other end. I. Yeah, let me let me know what color your urine is. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting well, a weird aftertaste. Good news, you won't almost... be able to tell if there's blood in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From all the Cheeto powder. 
<laughs> yeah, I, just, a powder. I feel like that's like a, a risk that you just take with that, that you might just end up pissing blood. <laughs> and that's just, you just have to accept that if you want to drink the most flaming hot drink to exist ever. But it's it's Mountain Dew, so they they've somehow uh, you know lobbied the government in a way that they don't actually have to tell you that happens. Right. <laughs> anyway, later guys. Later guys. On the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pigeonhole legislation for PepsiCo blood piss. <laughs> <laughs> PepsiCo blood piss. <laughs>